Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. 14. Verse 14. Issachar. Who? Issachar. Hey, who is Issachar? The Mexicans, right? Issachar is a what? Issachar is a strong us. What is it again? It's a strong us. The Bible says Issachar is a strong ass. What does that mean? Huh? Yeah, it's a strong ass. What do you think that means? It's powerful? Yeah, that's true, that's true. What do you think, Edward? You quiet over there, Edward. That's a good thing though, because you listening too. Both of y'all, both of y'all is a good thing. You got questions, you listening? What do you think that is? What's up? Powerful people, all praises. This is this is true. Read that again. Issachar is a strong ass. So Issachar is a strong ass. It's going into the donkey or the Buddha, right? If you, if you ever heard people like, I got a spirit animal, this, that, and the third, right? The Bible saying the animal that spiritually represents Issachar is the, the donkey, the Buddha, because it's a hard working animal, right? It may not seem like it can handle all of these burdens, all these things, but it can, because it's steadily pushing through it. That's when y'all are strong people, and that's what that means. Read. Crouching down between two burdens. It says crouching down between two burdens. What do y'all think the two burdens are are of the uh, so-called Mexicans? What do y'all think the two biggest things the Mexicans have to deal with are? You said authority? Okay, what else? Getting money? Okay, okay, what you think, Edward? Discrimination? Okay, okay. What's another one? I asked, I asked for two. Two burdens. Two bad things that you think the, your people got to deal with. This is things y'all should think about. Y'all are young men. Y'all are the future of, of our nation. Y'all are the future of our people. Y'all got to see your people and wonder, damn, why are my people going through these things? That should be on your head, even though that y'all young, okay? Read that again. It's a car. It's a strong ass. Crouching down between two burdens. Two burdens. Remember we said that the Mexicans, y'all are some of the hardest working people, right? So one of those burdens is long hours, meaning working all day, right? Another one is low wages, working all day for the least amount of pay, right? Y'all do, doing the, the dirtiest jobs for the, for the least reward, right? When this was your land. What's up? So are they lazy? Well, higher jobs? I mean, not necessarily. There's some. I'm pretty sure there's some Mexican CEOs, right? What we're saying is, or what the Bible is saying is, the majority of the Mexicans, right? They're the hardest working people, but they're not getting paid for what they're working. Worth this. Long hours, low wages. That makes sense. Like some some CEOs may be may be lazy. Some may work hard. But what the Bible is saying is, the so-called Mexicans specifically have long hours and low wages. Read. Verse 15. And he saw that rest was good. And he did what? And he saw that rest was good. Why is rest good to the to the so-called Mexican man? Why is rest good? Regain strength, right? From what? From what? Hard work, right? So from hard work, y'all need rest now. It's natural, right? But the, the but the the oppressors and, and so forth will call y'all lazy. All these la these lazy Mexicans, they don't do nothing, right? What y'all doing at every single job? Now when they see you rest or take a nap, you lazy? That makes no sense. The Bible says y'all work hard and y'all go rest hard. That's only natural. Read. And he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant. 
in the land, in the land that it was pleasant. So this land that we're on, from all the way to Mexico, right? Y'all saw that it was pleasant? Y'all said, we taking this for us. Remember the first scripture you read to y'all, how y'all got here? Once y'all got here, y'all said, okay, we're gonna split up. I'm gonna take this land over here, you take this land over here, I call dibs. Got a picture of like a bunch of brothers. I call dibs, I got this land, you got that land. Y'all saw the best land over there? And y'all said, we're gonna take that for ourselves. That's why it's the vacation points, right? That's why you got Rocky Point. That's why you got Acapulco. Um, I'm pretty sure some uh, various other things that I can't remember, but it's a vacation resort, right? That's why, okay? So now, with this being said, and that y'all know that we have to, we have to keep God's commandments, right? Y'all recognize that you're God's chosen people? What do y'all think we should do? You said what? Pray to God, and what else? Listen to the commandments, right? So what's one commandment that we brought out that y'all should listen to today? What's, what's one commandment? Yeah, it's the Sabbath day, right? What can't you do on the Sabbath day? You cannot work on the Sabbath day. All right, give me a... I'm gonna give you another, I'm gonna give you another commandment. I just wanna see where your spirit at. Give me 1 Corinthians 11. Let's, let's see if we really if we really believe in the Bible and if we would do what it says. Knowing, knowing that now your history is in it, and that because of our bad choices, we're in the situation we're in. Let's see, let's see where your spirit is at as young men. Yeah, give me that. Uh start at uh start at one. It's a book of first Corinthians, chapter eleven, chapter chapter book of first Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse one. Of me, even as I also am of Christ. So all of us up here, I don't know if you know it or not, but we are Christians in the literal in the literal meaning, meaning we follow what Christ did. See these fringes on our shirt? That's what Christ did. Teaching on the Sabbath? That's what Christ did. Keeping the Sabbath? That's what Christ did. We do all of these things that Christ did. Read. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren. That you remember me in all things. If I tell you to remember something, most likely you're gonna forget it, right? It's, that's the reason I'm telling you, right? All right, all praises. And keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. So naturally, we've forgotten our history. We've forgotten certain ordinances. Read verse three. But I would have you know that the house, the head of every man. Read it, read it right. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So you hear that? The head of every man is Christ. What do you think that means? What do you think that means? Huh? So right now it says, remember the order and the structure, right? The ordinances. So it's saying the head of every man is Christ, meaning the, the order, it goes Christ at the top, then man, right? That's the order, read. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is supposed to be the man. Now we see a lot of days now, right, that uh, the woman is ruin, ru ruling their man, right? They're telling, hey, you sit down. You do this, you do that. The Bible says, as blacks, Hispanics, and natives, we're not no, we're not that. We're the Israelites. We, we supposed to, uh, we're we supposed to teach our wives. Not saying be uh, super aggressive with them and hit them and stuff like that, but show them the way and lead, by, lead for them like how Christ led for us, right? So that's Christ, man, woman. Who y'all think go under the woman? Who y'all think go under the woman? Children. Children go under the woman. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. So it gave you an additional one for the top. God, Christ, man, woman. Okay? Read. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So, Thomas, what is what does that last part mean? Read it again. Every man praying or prophesizing, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So what does that tell you? You heard it? Don't cover your head when? Read it again. Praying 
still prophesying, right? Yeah, don't have your head covered, right? What does prophesying mean? Yeah, like prophets, right? What do prophets do? They tell, they tell stuff, right? Out of what? Where's the prophecy at? The Bible, right? So once you're dealing with the Bible, you're dealing with prophecy, right? It says to take off your hat and pray. So what should you do now, Thomas? Yeah, you should take off your hat. Wait, what are you going to do? All praises, bro. All praises, all praises. All praises. That's a humble spirit. Don't be distracted by Satan. They, they gonna, what's going to happen over there is going to happen. That's a humble spirit, brother. You, are, you truly understand, though, right? All praises. Give me, um... Give me, uh, Numbers 1538. Give me Numbers 1538. You wonder why we wear this at the bottom of our shirts? Yeah, I'm going to show you why. Do you, uh, actually, let me show you here, too. Your ancestors did the same thing. Right? Now, you may not now know this or, uh, or understand that your ancestors are in the Bible yet. Uh, we're going to give you a flyer that y'all can look over at home. We got YouTube videos and all that. Uh, all this information is free. We just want to give y'all an understanding so y'all know who y'all are, okay? But look at the sun. You look at the natives, right? You said that your people were natives. Whether that's... What was it, Aztecans, Mayans, uh, Incas? Y'all were natives, right? What were y'all dress codes like? What was y'all wearing at the bottom of y'all shirts? Not necessarily a skirt, because look at this, I ain't wearing no skirt. That ain't no skirt, that's a robe, right? So now, what are, the, what are, what is they, what are they wearing at the bottom of? See, what's at the bottom of mines? Yeah, right, the little strings, right? If you look at right here, you'll see that they're wearing at the bottom of theirs. Same right here, same right here, same right here. All of the wardrobes. Those are fringes. Do you know why? All right, we're going to show you at the Bible, bro. Give me Numbers 15. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. What's the royal apparel that God tells us to wear? What should God's chosen people be dressed in? What should we be clothed in? Right? We have a uniform for work. We have a uniform for school. God has a uniform for us as well. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them. The Bible is to the children of Israel. It says, speak to you, Edward. Speak to you, Thomas. I remember your name. You, Thomas. You, Edward. Y'all are the children of Israel. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid and tell them to make them fringes. These are the fringes. These are the fringes. Right? In the borders of their garments. The borders of your garments is the bottom of your clothing, bro. So right at the bottom of your shirt, you should have fringes right there. You you, you know, that's, that's royalty. You're supposed to stand out as you walk amongst all of these people. God wants you to be different. Just like he wants that day to be different, he wants you to be different. Right? You special to him, remember? You special unto him. So you can't be embarrassed with the, with the clothes he told you to wear. Right? Everybody gonna come up to you like, damn, what is that? What is that? This is your this is your royal inheritance out of the Bible from God. That's what it is. Read. And bid them that they make fringes in the border of their garments throughout their generations. What does throughout their generations mean? Throughout time, right? So that means we should have never stopped wearing them, right? So if God commanded for us to do this and we didn't do it, what is that? That's sin. All praises that you understand. That. That's sin. So that's a, that's a commandment that we should be doing that we don't recognize because it's not in Exodus 20, right? Because it's not in the 10. We're supposed to keep all God's commandments out of the Bible. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the border a ribbon of blue. So at that bottom, at the border, we should have a ribbon of blue. That's what you see right here, right? This, this is the design, how the Most High wants us to uh, be clothed, read. Verse 39, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So 
So this is supposed to be something to keep us in the spirit of God's commandments in remembrance, right? We're supposed to grab this. Oh, damn. I, you know, y'all young brothers in high school. Damn. Let me not look at this girl's uh, behind. Let me not look. That's the, the, the friend. I shouldn't look at my sister for lust. Uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't steal that. I might have the temptation to steal. I shouldn't do that. Uh, this brother's making me angry. Let me grab my friend. Just be angry and send out. I'm not gonna fight him. I'm gonna walk away. This is supposed to. This is supposed to keep us in remembrance of the morals of the Bible of God. Read. And do them. And, and what? And do them. So after y'all hear this and y'all y'all go home, it it seemed like it's resonating with your spirit because when I brought that out, you did it, right? You shouldn't do things because because man says it, but because the Bible says it, right? And that ye seek not after your own heart. What does that mean, y'all? Seek not after your own heart. Can we push it up some so the little brothers can come to under it? No. All praises. What does that mean, y'all? What is uh read that part over? And do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart. What does that part mean? I like it. Oh, uh, you don't know? Yeah. All praises. Seek not after your own heart means not to seek after your own mind. When the Bible says heart, it's not talking about your heart is beating your chest. Right? Have you ever heard anybody say, hey, I remember that off heart? Like, I, I can just recite it. They're talking about their mind, right? They're not talking about, I remember it from the organ in my chest. Right? So we got to remember that we have to, uh, sometimes we have to disassociate our feelings from things. That's what the Bible is saying. We need to go not upon our own mind. We need to go upon the Bible. Read. And your own eyes, after which you used to go and hurry. In our own eyes, whether that's, hey, I want to go play video games instead of uh, congregating on the Sabbath, because that's another law on the Sabbath. Whether that's, I want to go skate or whatever. That's, there's no law to go skate on the Sabbath, you know? So you got, you have to, you got to, I just want to put the, the, uh, the thought in your head to think about what y'all should be doing throughout y'all daily life, right? What's going to be, what's going to increase your life? What's going to make things better? Yeah, right? But why though? You said what? Because he helps you? Do y'all want the kingdom of heaven? How are we going to get it? Following God, right? What does that mean though? Raising him in the Sabbath day? So, we're going to get the kingdom of heaven by keeping God's commandments. I'm going to show you, okay? But we're going to keep reading. Read it. Verse 40, that ye may remember and do all my commandments. Remember, he keeps saying that we may remember. This Bible is prophetic. Remember that. It's prophecy. So we're they know we're going to forget. We're going to be taken hostage. We're going to be colonized and forget God's laws. But he says we need to remember. Read. Remember and to do all my commandments and be holy unto your Holy unto what? Holy unto your God. This is all, all this clothing and everything is so we can be special unto our God. We can be different because our God wants us to be different. Just like the Sabbath day. Uh, it's the book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Y'all know what eternal life is? What's up? Life after death. So give me, give me some more. What does that mean? Higher self in heaven. Okay, you deep. <laughs> it means that so you can get the kingdom of God, right? The kingdom of heaven. That's what y'all want, right? This brother is asking the same question. Good master, how, how how am I gonna get to heaven? What do I need to do, right? Do I need to just pray on the Sabbath days? Do I should I go skate? What do I need to do? Read. Verse seventeen. And he said unto him. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. The only one good is God. This is what Christ is saying. Christ took the uh, the uh, the light off himself and put it on God. Read. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. That's right. But if we enter into life, if we enter, if we want to get the kingdom of heaven, which will be on earth, not just in the sky, we have to keep God's commandments. Because right now, what do y'all think y'all learning right now? You think you're hell? Why so? Yeah, the world's not good, right? That's that's true. What do you think, Edward? 
You think you in hell right now, or you think it's just uh, this is life? What is it? What's up? Come on, come closer, little bro. Heaven in hell, how so? Okay, okay. Um, I'll show you what the Bible says. It's, uh, give me, yeah, give me Isaiah five and thirteen. Isaiah 5 and 13. Let's see, let's see how the Bible describes hell, and then we're gonna get right back on the topic of hell. Okay. And how we gonna get that. Isaiah 5 and 13. Because when we think hell, we've been we think of what we've been seeing on TV. When we think heaven, we think of what we see on TV. But the scriptures say that the kingdom of heaven is gonna be established on earth. The scripture also say that uh, hell is on earth as well. But how, how is it on earth? Read. There's a book of Isaiah. Chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. So, have your people gone into captivity? What was this? Jail, jail and stuff? True, true, jail. But also, when uh, we talked about the Spaniards came into uh, colonized you right? They, they put different names on you. They forced religion on you. They put y'all in slavery. I don't know if you know that. 1492 on down, the Hispanics went to slavery. For not following, uh, for not following God's commandments. What is slavery uh, synonymous with? What is slavery? What does slavery go with? What's another word for slavery? Captivity. Is he saying, therefore, my people have gone into slavery? Captivity. Read that over. And this is the book of Isaiah. These are still just. I want you to remember. These are Israelites. These are the people who y'all come from in the Bible. Same thing keeps happening because we keep doing the same thing. You're not following God, just like you follow your parents. You keep getting punished. You keep getting keep getting uh, belted behind. Read. Verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. No, all people. My people are gone into captivity. So specifically, it's a certain people in captivity. Not everybody. Right? So if you look around, the... Uh, that not necessarily the Asians aren't going through a bad, right? The um, the white people are definitely aren't going through a bad. They're in Scottsdale, this, that, and the third, right? The Arabs aren't going through a bad. The Bible says my people are going through captivity. Who's in the barrios? Who's in the reservations? Who's in the projects? Who do you see in the worst conditions? Blacks, Hispanics, and natives, right? Read. Because they have no knowledge. And it's all because we have no knowledge of self and that we need to keep God's commandments. We don't know who we are according to the Bible. If we knew, if we truly knew that we were God's chosen people sent here to keep God's commandments and righteousness and to rule the earth, because that's what we're supposed to do. That's what the kingdom of heaven is for us, ruling the earth. Then then, uh, then we truly have knowledge and we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in. We wouldn't be smoking weed. We wouldn't be fighting our brothers over stepping over shoes, stepping on shoes, right? We wouldn't be gangbanging, just sleeping around with uh, with our sisters, you know. With our sisters, I mean our women, you know. Read. And their honorable men are famished. And our honorable men are weak, meaning our old men. Our old men are weak, so it's up to us as the young men, because I'm probably not that older than y'all. It's up to us as the younger men. Not all our old men, because we, we got us, we got some older brothers right here holding it down. So not no, not all our old men are weak, but our old men that are not keeping God's commandments, that's been here forever, right? They're weak now because oppression has got them weak. Does that make sense? They probably had the when you're young, you have the zeal in you, right? Oh no, I'm not, I'm not going for this. I'm not, I'm not gonna let you uh, talk about my people like that. I'm gonna stand up. But now that's out of them because getting beat down and beat down for years and years, then naturally you're just gonna you're just gonna give out, right? Read. And their multitudes dried up with thirst. And our multitudes are dried up with thirst. Keep reading. Verse 14. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her. Read that again. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. So because all these things happens, right? Because all of these conditions, right? All these things that were named, hell have enlarged itself. So what is the Bible saying? Is the Bible saying that hell is just a, is just a fiery pit? Or is it saying hell is also everything that we see in around us? The condition of our sisters prostituting themselves. Our brothers selling uh, drugs. Our brothers pipping out the sisters that's prostituting themselves. 
right? We are surrounded by hell, and it's all it's not a, it's not a Scottsdale because they're not surrounded by this stuff. We don't have to see cops drive. They don't have to see cops driving around everywhere in the neighborhood. And if they do, they're actually there to protect them, not to arrest them, right? Hell has the large itself for us. Give me um, Deuteronomy 28.1. 28.1. Let's get some more on heaven. On heaven. It's another scripture on heaven too. It's like Deuteronomy 11. Or is 11.21? Yeah. All praises. Give me 28.1. I'm going to get that off soon. Deuteronomy 28.1. It's a book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. It sound familiar? It sound like something I read earlier, right? It says, if you will listen to the voice of the Lord thy God, read. If, to, if you will listen, think of it as a father-child relationship still. If you will listen, read. To observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. It says, if we shall listen to the commandments of God, we will be set on high above all nations on the earth. I mean, you will be set above the white man. You will be set above the Asian man, above the Arab man. Not above us, because we are brothers. Whether whether we see it or not, we we the only ones that's equal. Wait, we get this equal hell, so we're going to get this equal heaven if we keep God's commandments. Right. All right. So... With, with that being said, y'all shouldn't feel no type of, y'all shouldn't feel bad. Oh man, they not going, we gonna be above them. Y'all shouldn't feel like that. Y'all should feel like, damn, I have a chance to be above and to rule in God's commandments and righteousness. Cause if you're keeping God's commandments, you're doing something good, right? So you're gonna be ruling in, in, in goodness, what according to God says, right? So y'all should, y'all should feel good about that. Not that, I'm ruling, so it's, it's, it's not equal. Now I feel bad. That's what we've been taught in society. There's no, you just said it yourself, there's no equality, right? So it's no way, there's no point in trying to make that. There's always gonna be a ruling class and a bottom class. Y'all tired of seeing y'all people be the bottom class? Y'all tired of y'all people being in hell in these conditions? And we have to keep God's commandments, right? right. Give me Titus too. Titus 2. Let's get some let's get some more of God's commandments. Your spirit not letting you leave. It's for it's for a reason. You gotta you gotta get these scriptures, right? You gotta get these scriptures. And remember, young brothers, we're not pushing no religion on you. This is not religion. We are giving you a history, your heritage, the way to life out of the Bible. That's get a right. Flyer? What's up? Did they did y'all get a flyer? Uh soldier saying get them a flyer so they get have something to look over to. What, yeah, what's, yeah, let me get a little summary. What tribe y'all from? What tribe y'all from? It's a car. What tribe you from? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how we men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.